What's up nerfers, it's been quite a while since I had a look at a flywheel powered nerf blaster, so I've decided to check in and see how they're doing these days. The last time I used one, the accuracy left something to be desired compared to a Springer, AEG or HPA nerf blaster. What I have here today is called the Griffin, and it's designed by Nerfer Flygonial. I can only assume that's a Pokemon reference. This was sent to me thanks to Frontline Foam in the USA, who sell these on their store. Links to both Flygonial and Frontline Foam can be found down below. The configuration I have here costs around 175 US dollars. First, a quick overview of the Griffin. This is a 3D printed Nerf blaster, so you can customize the color scheme however you like. Just for reference though, the primary color on mine is the purple, and the secondary color is the black. Frontline Foam also sell two different magwell types. This one takes half length darts using worker talon mags, but you could also choose full length darts if you still use those for some reason. Another selection you have to make is the type of flywheel cage you like inside of it. There's three different power level options. One of them shoots 130 feet per second. Another one shoots 150 feet per second. And the one I have here is a dual stage design, which achieves 200 feet per second. With a mag loaded in with darts, there's a rev trigger below the main trigger, which gets the motors spinning. And while they're spinning, just pull the trigger for semi-auto fire. The pusher is mechanically linked to the trigger rather than being motorized. This is very similar to the original Nerf Strife. There's also two different length front ends that you can choose from. The one that I have here is the carbine option, but there's also a shorter standard front end. I think the carbine front makes this feel more like a primary class blaster, and the extra barrel length after the flywheels may help stabilize the darts a bit more than the shorter one does. When you want to swap mags, the mag release is close enough to hit with your firing hand, and you can just gravity drop the mags if you're in a hurry to reload. The Griffin has a Picatinny quad rail, including a full length rail up top, and shorter lengths on both the left and right sides and on the bottom as well. At the back, it has an adjustable buffer tube stock, and this is where your battery goes. Removing the thumb screw and taking off the back cover, Inside, it can fit a battery up to 105mm by 26 by 36 mil Frontline foam sell a battery that's a perfect fit for the back of the blaster here, and I'll put a link to it down below. Some final points worth mentioning, being 3D printed, I would not recommend dropping this blaster. It would probably just shatter to pieces. Additionally, do not leave it in the hot sun or in your car as the plastic will melt. With those words of warning, that pretty much wraps up the overview though. So now let's get on to some testing. Now I tried a variety of different dart types in both a chrono test and a 30 meter accuracy test. And what I found was that the worker high end darts worked by far the best. So here's the chrono footage of those. Worker high end darts. With worker high-end darts, I got a high of 204, low of 168, average of 186, and a standard deviation of 12.3. Of all the darts I tested, worker high-end had the highest velocity and a standard deviation of 12.3, which isn't bad for a flywheel blaster. I should mention though that most Nerf Springers or AEGs generally score below a 10 in standard deviation. Worker high-end darts were also the most accurate from my findings, and chili darts, didn't even make it to the target at all, landing short at around 25 meters. Right here. Yeah. So here's my footage testing worker high-end darts, firing at a one meter diameter target from a distance of 30 meters away. So just before when I was shooting this off camera, to even reach the distance of the target from 30 meters away, I had to put my sight like ugh, up there in the tree. So, Best of luck if we even reach 30 meters with this thing. Which I would say 30 meters is fair because 
any nerve springer will reach that far. Just because this is a flywheel blaster doesn't mean it gets special treatment. All right, so we got worker high-end darts first. Right. Aiming way up into the tree so that these arced shots make it 30 meters. <laughs> That one only went about 10 meters. must be 15 shots from the worker high end. From a distance of 30 meters, the spread with worker high end darts was about 2.6 meters. Five of the shots landed just short of the target around 29 meters, while one other dart only went 10 meters. But I'll write that off as being a bad dart. Overall, the best accuracy this blaster was capable of, with the best performing darts I tested, was far worse than any Nerf Springer, AEG or HPA blaster I've ever tested. And it was actually even worse than Gelbull blasters, which we use in combination with Nerf here at the skirmish field. And we make fun of gel blasters all the time for being horrendously inaccurate. This thing's worse. So that raises an important question. Why would anyone ever use a flywheel blaster? At a regular Nerf event, flywheel blasters are made completely obsolete by AEGs. Or HPA if they're allowed in your area. Both of those types of blasters have the high rate of fire of a flywheel blaster. But with the accuracy of a manual springer. Even if you don't enjoy long range shooting and prefer chasing down your prey, the far better accuracy of an AEG would still be of benefit to you. Flywheel blasters are also ridiculously loud and they give your position away to everyone in the area. So when you got to the field, could you hear me shooting it? I could hear you from the opposite end of the car park and I actually sounded like someone was using an angle grinder. <laughs> and I was like, oh, Paul must be out on the field fixing something. And then I came close and then I realized it was a flywheel nerf blaster giving away your position from a solid 80 meters away. <laughs> Through an entire field of obstacles, it was I could hear where you were and I could pinpoint that you were over here. That's how loud it is. So that goes to show how not stealthy they are. <laughs> Probably the only reason I can think of to get a flywheel blaster currently is the lower price than an AEG. And that gap in price is only gonna narrow as AEGs become more mainstream. Flywheel blasters would also make a decent sidearm to a manual springer if you like to have a sidearm. I don't bother carrying one personally. I think if someone's managed to get close enough to me that I need a sidearm, I've done something wrong with my manual springer. This is the part where I was also going to mention that flywheel blasters can be more reliable than some of the earlier AEGs were. But while firing some chili darts through the griffin, this is what happened. Chili darts aiming even higher now. Oop, that got stuck in the flywheels. Can you smell the smoke? You can smell it before I even picked it up. At least one or two of those motors Ooh. are fucking burnt out. I'm going with that one right there. <laughs> oh, fuck. That was that was bad when I smelt that. Oh yeah, I can smell from here. Mm. Even that one only does 200 FPS. You'd expect more from four motors. <laughs> I mean, they're only little tiny brushed motors as well. I think they're 130s or something. Yeah, the amount of speed you're trying to get and, out of them. And you're shooting, you're shooting from one flywheel pair into the other one. So the chances of a misalignment and a jam and then fucking up all your motors is pretty high. Yeah. A dart got stuck in the flywheels and burnt the motors out. So I have to say, from a reliability standpoint, one of the newer AEGs, like the Sweetheart Storm, absolutely schools the flywheel blasters. For the price of the Storm though, you could buy two Griffins, 
but for around the same price as a Griffin, you could just buy a Worker Harrier instead. Given the choice between a Manual Springer or a Flywheel Blaster, I would pick the Manual Springer every time. And a poll that I ran earlier this year seems to show I'm not alone there. Perhaps I just haven't met the right Flywheel Blaster for me yet. Maybe there's a 300 feet per second one out there with accuracy just as good as the Storm or the Harrier. Pushing darts between two spinning wheels and yeeting them out of a loose fitting barrel, if you can call it that, definitely sounds like it has potential. Or maybe that's just the sound of a Flywheel Blaster being heard from the next town over sounded like someone was using an angle grinder. But what do you think? Are you still hashtag Flywheel Master Race or have you joined the Springer Gang? Let me know in the comments down below. Hopefully this video has helped clear up why I don't use Flywheel Blasters. Give this video a thumbs up or a thumbs down to let me know what you thought of it. Although of course all the Flywheel Master Races are going to thumbs it down. Here's two other videos you might enjoy. And as always, thank you very much for watching. See ya.